Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Today I'm going to talk about salt and high blood pressure and the myth about that and clinical studies that reveal that salt does not cause high blood pressure and in fact lowers it. Now, I received an email uh, about a week ago from Tammy and she said, I've done everything to lower my blood pressure and nothing has really worked. I've listened to my doctor, I've changed my diet and I've removed all the salt and still there's barely any improvement. What can I do because I don't want to deal with the negative side effects of drugs? Well, Tammy, the real cause of high blood pressure is more to do with aging and the negative changes in your hormones. And I'll tell you more about this in a minute and how you can fix it as I've done with my own father. However, in regards to salt and hypertension, that's a myth. Listen, the internet is just full of misinformation and confusion, unfortunately, and my goal with these videos is to help give you clarity and eliminate the frustration when it comes to your health. So here's the reality check based on facts and clinical studies, not what so-called you know expert or some website said. High quality salt is essential for life. Listen, most of the planet is made up of salt water. Your body is made up of salt water. And listen, when you're in the hospital, they give you a saline drip when you're sick, which is made up of salt water. So logically, it makes sense that salt is important and needed. Now, as far as clinical evidence, uh, there was a one study done with over 6,200 people, right? That said that cutting salt intake did not reduce the risk of heart attacks, strokes, or any of this, or death, which is what we really care about. Now, in another study in 2013, it showed that lower salt consumption actually increased your risk of death from heart disease. And a review of the available research reveals that much of the science behind that supposed link between salt and hypertension, high blood pressure, is just dubious and doubtful at best. Now, according to the Scientific America, intersalt, which is a large study published in 1988, compared sodium intake with blood pressure in subjects from 52 international research centers and found no relationship between sodium intake and the prevalence of hypertension. In fact, the population that ate the most salt, which is about 14 grams a day, which is a lot, had a lower median blood pressure than the population that ate the least, which was about 7.2 grams a day. And it also went on to say that for every study that suggests that salt is unhealthy, there's multiple ones that reveal that it does not. So what about the studies that show lowering salt is good for your blood pressure? Now, a 2004 analysis of 11 salt reduction trials found that over the long term, low salt diets decrease systolic blood pressure by 1.1 millimeters of mercury, right? And diastolic blood pressure by 0.6. So listen to this part. That equates to reducing your blood pressure from 120 over 80 to only 119 over 79. That's nothing. That doesn't even count. Now, a 2006 study in the American Journal of Medicine study compared the reported daily sodium intake of 78 million Americans to their risk of dying from heart disease and the course of over the course of, you know, 14 years. Now, the study concluded that lower sodium diets led to higher death rates among those with cardiovascular disease. Now, I can go on and on, but I hope you see where this is leading. Salt is good for you. However, you know, not all salt is created equal. Not only is salt relatively benign, it's actually a nutritional goldmine if you consume the right kind. The modern table salt has very little in common with that natural unrefined salt from the past. Regular table salt will damage your health while natural salts are profoundly healing. Now here's a quick breakdown of their basic ingredients. Natural salt is about 84% sodium chloride and 16% natural um, occurring trace minerals, including silicon, phosphorus, um, vanadium, magnesium, potassium, and so forth. Now, processed table salt is what you normally see, is 97.5% sodium chloride, which is a lot more, and only two, and has 2.5% man-made chemicals, such as moisture absorbents and flow agents, which are dangerous chemicals. Processing table salt also radically alters and damages the structure of salt. Refined table salt is dried at above 100, about uh, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's super hot. 
and this excess of heat alters the natural chemical structure of salt, making it actually toxic. Now, one last thing, that processed white table salt causes water retention and bloating, especially with all the sodium in the prepackaged foods. This causes headaches and makes you look puffy. While natural salts containing the minerals and electrolytes are vital for water balance, the enzyme production, stress reduction, a better immune system, adrenal, and thyroid function. All right, so what's the best form of salt? Now, as stated, you want to avoid processed table salts and salts that which include the typical table salts as well as those found in uh, prepackaged foods and drinks. Also, you want to avoid the white sea salt because those are just heavily processed as well. What you want to do is you want to use unrefined natural salts such as Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt. Now, Celtic salt is slightly better because it has a little bit less sodium and more magnesium. However, almost the same, and what matters most between the two is how they taste for you. So, in summary, when it comes to salt, go ahead and add some to your favorite foods for a little bit of taste and a lot of extra health benefits. Just avoid that unrefined processed white salt and stick to natural salt such as Himalayan or Celtic sea salt. Um, even though now today's topic was more about salt, the original message is that you must have healthy blood pressure and it should be uh, about 120 over 80 or lower for optimal health and the avoidance of a heart attack or stroke. Now, this is such an important topic to me personally because I have a family history of high blood pressure and because of this, I have a special link under this video in the description area about the exact formula I use to lower my dad's blood pressure naturally in just a few short days. Best part, no drugs or diet changes. Well, that's it for today. I hope this video gave you more clarity. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel because I've got some really cool exclusive videos coming out soon. If you found it helpful, please share the health with others so they can benefit as well. Also do me a favor and please leave your comments below and any questions you have about today's topic or future ones. And most importantly, do yourself a big favor. Make sure you visit the link in the description area below about how I lowered my dad's blood pressure naturally and how you can copy the same proven formula. As always, thanks for listening and have a happy and healthy day.